Welcome back to DVC Weekly. This is episode 156. My name is Jason Opeling. I'm the broker of Buy and Sell DVC. I'm here with Scott Perioli. I'm the owner of DVC-Rental.com and Buy and Sell DVC.com. And today is January 31st, 2024. The 11-month window is December 31st, 2024. And the 7-month window is August 31st, 2024. As always, if you're looking for rentals, you want to go to dvc-rental.com. Remember the dash to save the cash. And for your resale needs, you want to go to buy and sell uh, dvc.com. So uh, we haven't really talked about we haven't really talked about uh, like um, well, I can't even uh, New Year's resolutions. Do you are you uh, you're still doing the food reviews? For this year, correct? Like, is, or is it? I'm still, I'm still doing the food reviews, and for New Year's resolution, I mean, I just not, not really a resolution, but it's, it's been ongoing. Now, I, I shaved a couple, you know, you see, a couple of weeks ago, I, I, I trimmed it up a little bit because I, I lost one of the chins, so I'm like, all right, I can trim it up a bit. But I'm, I'm still trying to lose weight. The, the holidays didn't kill me too badly. I mean, I, I put on some weight over the holidays, but nothing too bad. I tried try to watch what I was eating a, a bit, but it's hard over Christmas, especially when, with your family. But, you know, my, my New Year's resolution is just to keep trying to get healthier, exercise more. We're still, we walk five miles every morning. So just try to stay healthy, eat better. And I, I enjoy my life. I enjoy the business. I enjoy everything. I, I want to make sure that I'm around for as, as long as I can to enjoy all that. And then is it? Did you did you mention that you, there's a rowing machine involved? Or? I, I did add a rowing machine. I have a little, we'll call it a gym upstairs. One of the bedrooms we turned into a little workout room, and we added a rowing machine to it as as well as an expensive one on Amazon. It's like one hundred and seventy nine dollars. Actually works really really well. I'm happy with it so far, and it's. I was looking for something additional to be fun, and my boys are using it as well. And it's, you know, it's been happy, and I just need to keep progressing. Nice. And what is that thing? Is it about distance or resistance? Or it's about distance, or is it? I mean, there's. I don't really know. There's a little gauge that you can change the resistance on, and it measures how far you've gone. And I think the kilometers, but it also mentions like calories burned, and um, I'm sure, and, and how many. Rows you've done. Nice. So, yeah, it's, it sounds it's exciting. Work, you know, work your arms, work your chest, work your back a little bit, and working your legs too. So it's kind of an all-encompassing machine. So we yeah, enjoyed it so far, and it was inexpensive. And if we keep enjoying it, I thought about even picking up a second one to have next to it because a lot of times it's my wife and I are kind of like fighting who gets to use the rowing machine. Oh wow! Who, who's forced to walk on the treadmill instead? So a lot of times, yeah, fight over that rowing machine. So I might have to get a, another one. Nice. So on the buy and sell side of things, uh, so again, as of now, the Polynesian, the new Polynesian Tower is going to be under the same association as the current Polynesian. So, you know, does that mean that there's going to be a point chart uh, redistribution because now, you know, they're going to have the entire resort that they have to assign all the point charts, the points for the different villas. And does that mean that the current studios are going to require more points and the bungalows are going to be less points? Um, I mean, if, if that does happen, there's probably going to be, you know, grumblings and mumblings and uh, some unhappy campers. And so that's, you know, I'd mentioned this before. I was going to mention it now. And I well, while the, I, I know they mentioned that there's going to be you know, studios, one bedrooms, two bedrooms, and the duo studios, I don't think I've seen anything mentioned about views. I mean, I don't, from where the tower is, I can't imagine any of them having sort of lake view or anything. Have you heard anything about different views? No. Are they all just standard, or is, is there somehow one's going to be different than the other? I mean, one of them, if, if it's facing out and looking over the street, I mean, there was the golf course there, but I think they actually. They're working on the golf course and they get rid of it. So I was just wondering if there's any different view categories that they have not mentioned yet. That I haven't heard. Because when they did the Grand Floridian, nothing changed with the current. Well, they did. Remember? Oh. They have three different views now for the, the new Grand Floridian Resort. 
But as far as the the point chart for the the, the, the old point chart was not affected. At okay, all. that's what I'm saying. Okay, so when that happened, there was no redistribution and no correct, correct. Okay, correct. but yeah, the new, that new resort had three different view categories. I don't the Polynesian. I don't think they've mentioned anything just yet. At least as as of this recording, right, right, right. they have not mentioned anything just yet. So something could have come out by the time we're done with this and. Don't don't yell at us if all of a sudden you're like the, the course they told you about the <laughs> different. They've got a golf course view now, the first one ever. As of right now, there's no no changes in different view categories. So that's really all I have on the buy and sell side of things. So you're carrying this episode, but you can do it now. Thanks, man. And now we're on to the food of the week. Come here, I'm gonna eat you. Get in my belly. But today's food of the week. I got the red velvet whoopie pie at the Starbucks location in Hollywood Studios. This again was before Christmas, so this is probably, I have to imagine this is probably not there anymore. There's a red velvet cake with candy cane buttercream center uh, like rolled in sprinkles on the outside of it. I've heard that past versions of this uh, came with more of like a cream cheese filling, and I probably would have preferred that a little bit more. Um, th 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 this was still pretty good. Um, I, w I wish the film had more of a mint taste to it, because again, it's candy cane, buttercream. There was a light mint taste to it, but I would have preferred it to smack me a little bit more, as I felt it was a little underflavored in that department. Uh, cake wasn't dry at all, which was definitely a plus. Um, it, it wasn't bad. I, I probably wouldn't have gotten this again. I don't know if they could bring... They, they, they've had this for several years in a row for the, the holiday season, so there's a decent chance this is going to come back again. I give this a 7.1, definitely not bad. I mean, if, if you're coming down here for the first time and you want to try it, I definitely recommend it. But it's one of those things that once I've tried it, I personally wouldn't want to probably get this again. And now we're on to the DVC dash rental side of things. On the rental side, uh, I've, I've got a decent amount here, so maybe this is helpful because you threw me under the bus today. Is that what talk about? And you can maybe add on to this as well to help out if you so choose. Some of the hidden gems around uh, Walt Disney World that a lot of times people overlook, don't bother doing these things. And to be honest, some of these I haven't really done before or, you know, haven't done in a long time. Like uh, Tom Sawyer Island at Magic Kingdom, which is a secluded spot reached by a raft. Uh, the island offers a peaceful escape with caves, bridges, and an old fashioned fort. Have you done Tom Sawyer Island no. recently? No. Have you done ever? I mean, you have to think pretty hard. I'm thinking not really. Probably not. I, I haven't done Tom, Tom Sawyer Island in a couple of years. I, I've done it, I think, twice in my life. But again, a lot of people don't ever bother doing it. So just, again, remember, hidden gems, stuff you wouldn't normally expect. This doesn't mean these are our favorite things. Uh, Enchanted Tiki Room at, made the list at Magic Kingdom. It's often overlooked. This classic attraction features animatronic birds and a lively Polynesian theme show. Also great for air conditioning and relaxing for a while. It's a very, very nice show. Also, at points it gets like a little dark in there and there fake rain around you. It's actually quite relaxing, especially on one of those hot summer days. Uh, Morocco Pavilion at Epcot, um, all the cool different architecture, different alcoves, they've got marketplace in there where they've got incense burning, some cool places to eat as well. I mean, you can spend a, a decent amount of time back there. There's a little building that nobody even goes into that's all tiled in there and has some beautiful lanterns hanging that I feel like nobody even realizes is there. Uh, another one that I've not personally done is the Wilderness Explorers Program at Animal Kingdom. It's a fun and educational scavenger hunt style activity for kids and adults to earn badges throughout the park. I always see kids doing this and they always mention it on the Kilimanjaro Safari rides about one of the questions that you need to answer in your... Uh, your Wilderness Explorers game is, I won't, I won't ruin it for anybody, is, is about the, the uh, truck that you're on. Um, the boardwalk, boardwalk by itself area, this resort area recreates a 1930s Atlantic City boardwalk with charming shops, restaurants, and street performers. I've talked about it in the past. I absolutely love boardwalk. I love eating at boardwalk. The entertainment over there is great. You're on the lake, especially beautiful at night. You got the boats going around. It's right by the Skyliner, so there's lots of activities to do over at Boardwalk, and I think a lot of people who, I feel like a lot of people don't, there's a lot of people who don't stay deluxe, and I feel like they don't even know that Boardwalk is like a resort, and I mean, it's not just a resort, it's all the activity, great shopping, there's also the, the Wayland, um, the gallery for, you know, paintings and stuff, so a lot of really cool stuff to do at Boardwalk that you don't have to be staying there to really go over and enjoy. Plus, if you're 15 and 19, 
to me is the ideal place to go to. It's a great area if you've, if you've got teenagers. Great area to stay where it's got, the, the kids. Can, it's a nice enclosed area where if you want to relax in the room, you can and let the kids kind of go out, walk around, get the shopping there, food, entertainment, lots of lots of action activity for them to not be bored and not them. And they'll find other teenagers. Exactly, not, not them sitting in the room staring at you, going now what or on their phones. They can go out, lots of fun stuff to do. And again, it's all in a relatively safe and enclosed atmosphere. Right, I mean, it's just one big circle there, and yeah, it's perfect. Yep. That okay. should be number one. If we're ranking this, that should be number one. Well, these weren't ranked. But I know, but that would be number one. I'm just saying, I just want people, people to order. focus on yeah. that one. That's, that's, that's a great one. Uh, no one that made the list was the Pixar Short Film Festival at Epcot, located next to the Imagination Pavilion. It's a little, a little theater that shows old rotating Pixar short films. Again, highly, highly overlooked. I think I've, I've only done this once as well. N not bad, not one of my favorite things. Again, I, I this boardwalk well above this. However, this is in the parks, in Epcot, something that a lot of people just don't even do. Next one on the list is for our boy, Ty, Trainer Sam's Grog Grotto at the Polynesian, Tiki Bar with interactive elements and creative drinks, offering a lively and entertaining atmosphere. I haven't personally gone there. I'm not a big. I'm not a big drinker. I've seen lots of video, and I've got friends who go there. We know Ty who works for us. Ty absolutely loves it over there. Have you gone over there? Have you gone to Trader Sam's? Uh, I don't think I have because huh? it's not ringing a bell. Because huh? it sounds like the way you're describing it, this must be on TikTok every weekend or something. No, no. Well, I'm, I'm sure. I'm, I'm guarantee if you search for on TikTok, talk, it'll definitely be there. But I haven't seen it as like a popular trending item. But I mean. It, it is very, very popular, and it reopened a couple of years ago with all new interactive stuff. And I mean, for a while, there was like three hour waits to get into it because it's a very, very small place. Oh, wow. Yep. The aquarium in the Living Seas Pavilion at Epcot. It's got smaller aquariums in there and, and stuff you can look at with your kids, like just not aquariums, like little fish tanks. And then they have one of the largest fish, fish tanks in the world that's 5.7 million gallons. So a lot of times you, know, you, you get off the Nemo ride. And a lot of people just head right to the exit, where if you walk around, they've got little tanks there. If you go upstairs, they've got, you know, actually before you can get up there, you've got the big tank with all the sharks and everything. And there's a whole aquarium. You can go in the back and look. And you can go upstairs, and they've got manatees, and they've got people feeding the manatees and, and talking to you about taking care of the manatees. Like, there's so much stuff in that area. But I think a lot of people just get off the ride and just whip out to go to the next ride and don't sit there and take the time to enjoy all that, this, that Epcot is offering right there. The, oh, the, the Friendships Boats, where we talked about that, um, was it last week? A couple weeks ago. A couple weeks ago, I don't even remember. Where the, the boats that connect Epcot, Hollywood Studios, and the resorts are, um, go around Crescent Lake, providing a scenic and relaxing mode of transportation. Again, if you happen to be listening to what I said before, and you go over to the boardwalk, get yourself some food, do some shopping, hop on the Friendship Boats, go for a ride around the lake, it's absolutely beautiful. And the last one on my list is the Liberty Square Riverboat in Magic Kingdom. I've only done this a handful of times, but I, I have done this in the past year. Uh, peaceful journey around Tom Sawyer Island, providing a unique perspective of Frontierland and Liberty Square. It's an old style boat ride, steam, you know, paddle boat ride. And, the, the, you know, they've got interaction. They've got people like talking over the thing. Again, it's a, it's a recording. But you know, you're now in fathom, you know, at nine fathoms, it's very like old fashioned style. It's very like reminiscent of something from maybe 1800s or maybe early 1900s. It's just, it's, it's a cool, relaxing boat ride around the little Magic Kingdom area. And you have to go by Frontierland and check out Big Thunder Mountain and stuff. So, again, these were just some of these hidden gems, stuff that you don't typically go on every trip that maybe you've forgotten about that really you should try to end it to you next day. So I'm just going to ask one question. Now, this is hidden gems of Walt Disney World. Now, this is not Walt Disney World, but this is in the Orlando area. Not Vero Beach. No. Okay. I have to know. I'm going to guess no for your family because I'm guessing like at this point you still haven't been to a Magic game, correct? No, I've not been to a Magic game. Okay. So what about Winter Park Chain of Lakes boat tour? I've heard very good things about that. I've never done that. that. Oh my god! I'm not really sure what it is. I, last time I went to Boathouse, the guy who was working at Boathouse asked me if I had done that, and I, 
No, I, I have not. What exactly is it? So, well, have you heard? I mean, do I've you heard know? of it. So okay. the Winter Park chain of lakes. Have you looked at it on the map or anything? No, or no? No. So basically, I, I think it's five lakes, and they're connected by these canals, mm -hmm. right? So they had this uh, boat tour, and I, I mean, this boat tour is probably full every day, and it's you know they multiple times, multiple boats, and then you get on and you go through the canals, go to the lake, go to the other canals, and. Um, the downtown college is right there. Uh, Rollins mm -hmm. is right there. And I mean, it's just, I mean, my kids have probably been on that boat tour at least six times. Really? Yeah, I've been on it uh, multiple times. My wife's been on it probably more times than me with her parents. I've been kayaking through the Winter Park chain of lakes. How, how long does the boat tour take? Uh, I mean, off the top of my head, I'm going to guess 45 minutes to an hour. You know what the but next question is going to be? How much is it? Uh, that I don't know. I mean, it's not. I mean, I would. It's not. Money is uh, no object to use. So no, it's no, not. It's, it's not some crazy hashtag price or anything. Thrifty. I'm guessing it's less than thirty dollars. But oh, you know, I mean, I will tell you this: I haven't been on the Winter Park tour since 2020 when everything shot up in price. So yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's now. Dollars a person. <laughs> <laughs> but That's but if you're if you come to Walt Disney World, and again, I mean, there's, it's, you know, it's probably not, if you're only coming to Walt Disney World one time, this is the Winter Park Chain of Lakes boat tour is probably not something you want to do. But if you've been coming and now you have kids that are getting older and maybe some of those kids are thinking about going to UCF or maybe they're thinking about going to Rollins. I mean, the Winter Park Chain of Lakes boat tour, I mean, I definitely recommend it because, it, I mean, first, and then you're also going to be in the Winter Park area. Well, I'm assuming... How, how, how big is this boat? Like, how many people are on it? So it's a huge pontoon boat, and I would guess five, seven, six, one. I would guess there's like thirty-five people on each boat. That's a big pontoon, and it's just—it's narrated. The guy drives and tells you about what wildlife or estuaries or like what what, what are they? Um, I mean, he might tell you like. Well, I mean, first of all, guys, you're gonna see things. Uh, well, I mean, and the houses on the on the Winter Park chain of lake—they're all you know humongous houses. Um, but it, I mean, it's more the nature part in these. And when you go through the, um, the channels, it's only like wide enough for the boat to go through there. Mm -hmm. And so like, let's say you're kayaking, it's when you go to enter a, ch uh, a channel, it says on the sign, you know, do not enter between these times and these times, because that's when the boat's going to be going through. Yeah. But if you are a kayak and you're still in there on a boat, you can still get to the side because there's all these homes in the canals, you know, where their their boat is in the, you know, over here it's in the canal. They can drop in and just go into the canal. So yeah, you've, mean, done, you've done kayaking in there. Oh yeah, yeah, multiple Have times. You've done fishing in there. Oh yeah, yeah, catch bass in there. There's a lot of uh, hydrilla in there lately, um, but it's really nice. Like it's and then oh so. And then if you just wanted to take your family down there for the day, you could go to Dinky Dock. So, so you know, so I don't know what Dinky Dock is. Is it a restaurant? No, it's a, like, it's a, I guess you would call it a park. Okay. So you go to Dinky Dock, you park, you go down there and then that's where that part of the lake is like, uh, you know, the sand bottom and you could just hang out at in the Dinky Dock Park and your kids could be in. You know, I'm not a big fan of swimming in lakes, not necessarily for the alligators, but for the amoebas. Um, but you can definitely, you know, wade in there and, and stuff. But it's a really nice area. Like if you, you should, even if you're not going to do the boat tour, you should take your family down to Dinky Dock. So you're not worried about the alligators. You're more worried about the very, very rare brain-eating amoeba. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's, that's alligators aren't gonna. I will tell you this: the alligators, alligators everywhere. You're not worried about. They're not gonna bother you though. Well, you're swimming in the lake. You're not. Worried as about long as people either. don't feed an alligator, it's not gonna bother you. But what happens if they don't feed it? Then it's hungry. No, no, no. Yeah, it's, it's gonna, like gonna find its own food. Snack. It's gonna find its own food. I want full alligator. But if you're just been fed. But when I so I'm um, again, if you went there now in January. Yeah, you know, first of all, you're not going to really want to go swimming because the water temperature is probably going to be too cold. I wouldn't be worried about amoebas. But if you went there July 15th, when the temperature is super high, I, I would be worried about 
my head going below the surface water with amoebas. But, okay. but we've got sidetracked on the amoebas. But you should go to Dinky Dock. So I'm not taking away from Scott's list. It's a very good list. But if we want to add something, Winter Park, Chain of Lakes, Dinky Dock. I'm going to add something right now. And this is going to blow your mind, I think. I know way too much about amoebas from stupid sixth grade science. I, I can't remember stuff I learned yesterday. Like, do you know what the arms of the amoebas are called? No. Called pseudopods. Oh, really? And you know how they eat? They engulf their food with their pseudopods through a process called phagocytosis. Wow. Too much about amoebas and other microorganisms. And you were learning this on Long Island? Yeah, this is this is back from when I was in like sixth grade or seventh grade or something. I don't know if like the little protozoa have little cilia on them, or they use a flagellum to help propel them through the water. There's something a little hair-like, uh, little hair-like uh, follicles around the protozoa. I don't know. And was there a paragraph in the book about Florida and amoebas or no? Uh, the, the, uh, the they top. didn't mention it, no? They mentioned phagocytosis and uh, pseudopods, but they didn't mention Florida, chain of lakes, alligator country. Dinky Dock? At Dinky Dock. <laughs> you gotta go to Dinky Dock. Look at that biology lesson. Nobody was expecting that, especially me. And if we were ranking them, boardwalk in again. If you have teenagers, I would I would go there because you can relax on the rocking chair, let your teenagers wander around, and hopefully stay out of trouble. And it should be a good night. Yep, send them out. Let them get some ice cream. Watch a little magi magi uh, magicians on the boardwalk and call it a day. All right. All right. <laughs> we'll see you next week. I'm Dr. Ferrioli. I'm about to say. I better stop. Have a great day. Have a great day.